me. In this coronavirus time, how, what is the challenge for you in order to help someone who lost a sibling or a friend or a parent to a terror attack or in war uh, when they can't go to the grave or they can't go together and be in person with someone for therapy or for emotional support? Everything has to be done at a distance. How challenging is that? Okay, first of all, thank you very much for hosting me. Um, as you say, it was really, we had a lot of thought being put into this day because usually me and all my staff, all our counselors, all our volunteers, um, in this Memorial Day, we are always with all our children on this day. Um, we go to the grave, we go to the ceremonies, <laughs> we're with them in their homes. And this is basically the first time we have to be able to send a very big uh, hug and a lot of support through technology. Um, at the end, what we have decided to do, and the day isn't over, but what we see is working. The children are really looking for this. Um, last night, there was the main ceremony of one family that was on YouTube and Facebook and everything, and we decided in the youth um, community to basically show it through Zoom so that kids who don't want to be alone by watching the ceremony will be able to be together. And there were many, many children who participated through the Zoom and we watched the ceremony together. Um, and today at the morning at a quarter to 10, a quarter to 11, excuse me, we did the same thing. We opened up the Zoom and we said, any kid that doesn't wanna stand alone uh, during the siren and wants to be together um, should come together. And there were hundreds of kids this morning all together. Uh, we had some, ch some other specific children who spoke, one about their brother, one about their father that were murdered. Um, and just getting together and seeing all the faces on the screen gives a lot of strength and power for all these children. Um, and after that, today, during the day, each group that they're divided into age groups is getting a specific workshop, a therapeutic workshop um, of all the children of their age, speaking about their feelings and their emotions. And we're really trying to do our best by a big, big hug um, from a distance, even though it's very hard. Yeah, as, as President Reuven Rivlin said in his address last night, that we are crying together, but we are crying at a distance. Panina, tell me more about what uh, questions the One Family Organization is getting, the kinds of concerns and uh, uh, questions that the children want answered during this pandemic. I'll give you one great example. We had this kid, he's 13 years old. He had a bar mitzvah a few months ago. Um, after Leila said there, this kid uh, spoke to his uh, counselor and was telling him how hard it was for him, Leila said there, because his father was killed a few years ago and he only has one sister and his mother. And usually they do Leila said there with all their relatives and a big family. And this year, since they couldn't, it was only the three of them. And he had to be, as he said, Ha'aba Shel Haseder, the father of the whole Leil Haseder. And he had to hide the Afikomen. And he was crying and, 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 and telling how hard it was for him to be the one that couldn't look for the Afikomen because he was the one that was hiding it. Now, this is a small story of a small 13-year-old boy, but this is something that our families are dealing with because that they're so alone and even not only today on the Memorial Day, during this whole time, the whole Corona time, it is very, very hard um, for them to deal with the with yeah. all the restrictions. That's a very eye-opening story, that one small story illustrating really the struggle for so many families. Thank you so much, Panina, for being with us.